Welcome to the next video. In this video, we're going to perform reflections. A reflection uses a line like a mirror to reflect a figure. That mirror line is called the line of reflection, often referred to as M for mirror. Here's an example of reflecting the point P across M to get P prime. Notice that if we connect P and P prime with a line segment, that M is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. And that will happen no matter what your line is, no matter what your line of reflection is. Check it out. In this picture, we have a slanted line of reflection. And yet, it's still the perpendicular bisector of the segment connecting P with P prime. What about if P is on the line of reflection? Well, guess what? Then P prime is going to be the same point. And that happens sometimes. Let's get to our examples. We're going to reflect this triangle over the x-axis, indicated here by the green dashed line. The way I like to do that is to count. Notice how A is one, two units away. So I have to go the same distance on the other side of the x-axis and end up here at A prime. B is going to be one unit away on the other side of the x-axis, B prime, excuse me. And C prime is going to be three units away on the other side of the x-axis and then you connect the vertices to make your image. Let's reflect over the y-axis. Same triangle, different line of reflection. Same method though. One, two, three, four, five units away. A is five units away. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five units to end up at A prime. B prime, where do you think that's going to be? It's going to be in the same spot because B is on the y-axis. And C prime is going to be right here, three units away from the y-axis. Let's get to something a little bit more interesting. What about if your line of reflection is y equals x, which, if you remember from algebra, has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, indicated here by the green dashed line. Well, this is a diagonal line of reflection. And to reflect across it, you're going to have to count diagonally. Here's what I mean by that. A is one, two, three and a half boxes away from the line of reflection. So you're going to have to count a half a box to get here. And then three more boxes. One, two, three. And where I ended up there is going to be where A prime is. B prime, notice how B is just a half a unit away, half a box away, excuse me. So B prime is just going to be half a box away. And if you count it, C is going to be three boxes away. So C prime will be one, two, three, right here. And then, let me get rid of this line here so I can connect the vertices. And then you just connect your vertices to make your image. What about if your line of reflection was y equals negative x? Now we have a negative 1 slope. Well, a is 1 and a half boxes away. So a prime will be right here. Get rid of that. B prime is going to be half of a box away. And C prime is going to be, again, in the same spot as C. And there's your image. It kind of looks cool. I wanted to show you some examples of um, horizontal and vertical lines that aren't the axes. See, y equals 2 is a horizontal line, but it's not, it's not the x-axis. It's right here. Here's y equals 2. I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit because I think we've done enough examples now. A prime is going to be on the line. B prime is going to be here. And C prime is going to be here. In these, in these last two, notice that the image and the pre-image overlap. That happens sometimes. 
x equals negative 1 is a vertical line. a prime is going to be 1, 2, 3, it's got to be 4 units away. Right here, here's b prime, and c prime is 2 units away right here. The last thing I wanted to do was, in general, what happens to a point's coordinates when reflecting? In other words, can we find a rule? If we just have a general point, we'll call it AB, is there a rule for what happens when we reflect over all these lines of reflections? Let's try the x-axis. 1, 2 become 1, negative 2. So in general, AB becomes A, negative B. The y-axis, 1, 2 becomes negative 1, 2. So, AB becomes negative AB. Y equals X. 1, 2 becomes 2, 1. What happened? The X and the Y swap places. So, AB becomes BA. And finally, across Y equals negative X. 1, 2 becomes negative 2, negative 1. So AB becomes negative B, negative A. Now these are the rules. I'm not saying you have to memorize them. But there they are for you. Personally, I just tend to count like the way I've shown it. But what I need you to take away from today is that there's all these different lines of reflections. The most common ones are the x-axis, the y-axis, y equals x, and y equals negative x and how to reflect across them, but also be prepared to use other lines of reflections besides those.